around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Looky there, Sam. The big fella's about to start the show now. Hello, everybody. I heard you Dodge City folks were up and coming, ready to pay the price for a real thrilling spectacle. Well, this is it. A feat of daring the like of which ain't been seen since the days of William Tell. Oh, he's a pretty funny talker, ain't he? Uh-huh. Now put your money in the hat or there won't be any show. Well, come on, Sam. Come on. Thank you. Hey. Thank you hey, very much. Hey, is that your little boy, Mr. Tell? What? <laughs> You want to find out, mister? Here, here, here now. now this wait, is wait. my partner, mister, little Murray. He may be small, but he ain't no boy, as you just found out. Now, I'll advise you to put some money in there. Well, sure, sure, I'll, I'll put you. You gonna shoot that tin can off in the little fella's head? I shoot one off in his head, he shoots one off in mine. If you put in your money. Oh, well, sure. Here's mine. Now, gentlemen, stand back. Out of the way. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Now, I place this small can on my head. Please do nothing to distract my partner. This is a serious moment. You ain't joking, mister. Now, please, please. <laughs> Here, now, now, make no sound as he counts. Yes, one. One. Two. Three. What's trouble, Marshal? There's a law about firing guns in the straight here, mister. But, Marshal, this is an exhibition, a theatrical performance. You might say it's even education. I don't care what you call it. There's lead flying and it can kill somebody. One of you, even. Well, that's what makes a performance, Marshal. That's what they pay to see. You're risking a lot for that little hat full of money. We trust each other's marksmanship, Marshal. Nobody's that good every time. We're gamblers, Marshal. Well, you won this time. Go ahead and split the pot. But we haven't finished here. All right, everybody, the show's over. Move along. You won't let us go on? No. And suppose we move outside town. No laws and against little target practice, is there? No. But this kind of target practice, if you miss, you'll face a murder charge. Well, I told you, we're gamblers, Marshal. We're going to set up a game here. Any objections? Not if your game is honest. What's your name, anyway? Grover Cranston P., at your service. And this is my partner, Little (laughs) Maury. I hardly remember his last name, but I think it's Smith. Yeah, I'll bet, like yours, is Grover. Now, that ain't too friendly of you, Marshal. I'm not paid to be friendly, mister. Well, uh... Well, now, gentlemen, uh, let's remove ourselves from the marshal's the jurisdiction and finish the spot. Oh, my, that choke cherry pie is good. Want another piece, Chester? Well, well I, I don't know, Miss Kitty, uh... How about you, Mr. Jones? No, not for me, Chester. Uh, Doc? Uh, no, not me, but you go on. Oh, yes, Chester, you have another. It's just the thing for you. No, I uh, reckon I'm better not, Miss Kitty. Oh, don't let him scare you, Chester. I'll go out to the kitchen and get it for you myself. Sure, she'll get it for you, Chester. 
And I'll start figuring what to charge to cure you. Oh, now, Doc. No, I mean it. I mean it. Just another inch around the middle and you're going to have trouble, boy. I noticed yesterday how short of breath you were. Just walking out to the town limits. Uh, uh, Huh? Uh, Oh. What do you mean? Oh, I let the cat out of the bag. Uh, Oh. Oh, oh, man, now, you knew about those two putting on their William Tell act again yesterday, didn't you? That's the first time in two weeks. Yeah, sure, Doc. I just didn't know that you and Chester were there, that's all. Well, well, Mr. Young, I I figured maybe somebody ought to make sure that it's really over the line. Uh Uh-huh. I hope you had a good first-row seat, Chester. Yes, sir. How about you, Doc? Were you able to see all right? Well, uh, uh, well, I thought that there might be a chance of my... uh, uh, professional services that they might be needed. Sure. That's exactly what brought a couple of hundred others out there. It's too bad they disappointed you. Here you are, Chester. Yeah, oh, uh, um, thank you, Miss Kitty. <clears throat> yeah, what I can't figure out is uh, why they stay in that crummy boarding house where you steer them, Chester. Oh, now, Doc, Miss Gans runs a real nice place. Uh, what I mean is... Well, it's real nice. Yeah, what you mean is the boarding house is bad and the food is worse. But the widow Gans is young and pretty. Hey, would you please Marshal? Sugar a minute? Yeah, all right. Well, you was watching our poker game last night. Do you have to do that? But I keep an eye on every game in town. You had any complaints about ours? If I had, you'd be in jail. We don't have to cheat. I hear you made quite a pile in the last couple of weeks. We've done all right. Yeah, but you're greedy. You put on your act again yesterday, didn't you? And it was outside of town. You know, you'll go on till one of you is dead. I'll tell Grover what you said when I find him, Marshal. I saw him about an hour ago over on Bridge Street with Effie Gans. Effie Gans? Yeah. Thanks. Did I say something wrong? I don't know, Kitty. Well, you did seem a little sore about something. You know, Grover was sweet-talking Effie Gans. She's a widow. You figure those fellows might be pulling some game on her? Oh, I doubt it, Kitty. She's not rich enough. More likely to be the other way around, if you ask me. Oh, now, Doc, she's real nice. Oh, sure, and she's real pretty, too. But so's a rattlesnake, if you want to look at it that way. The shoveling started at the little town of Rome in New York State back in 1817. And on July 4th, 1967, the post office released a special sesquicentennial stamp there in honor of the big ditch they dug, which it says on the stamp in my album here was the Erie Canal. Now, in case you don't know, that canal went all the way from Buffalo on Lake Erie to the Hudson River connecting the Great Lakes with the Atlantic Ocean. The biggest waterway ever built in the United States at the time, and it was done mostly by the Irish just over from the old country, (laughs) who who did their digging with spit and muscle. (laughs) Made lots of money for years on tolls. And the traffic and freight and people through the canal was mainly responsible for building up the Midwest and keeping business in the East busy doing it. Well... Of course, the Erie Canal ain't what she used to be, because the railroads do most of the job now. But the big ditch is still there, and so is all the history that went through it. Hey, Grover. Oh, hello, Maury. I was just going down to open up the game. You coming? I've been looking for you. Where you been all morning? Why, around town. Who with? What do you mean, who with? Lots of people. And everybody wants to see the act again. I I think we ought to put it on this afternoon. The crowd gets bigger every time. You know why they keep coming back to see it? Sure. I hope someday we'll miss. And someday we will. Grover, let's get out of this town. Why, we're doing fine. I don't like it. And we got enough now, more than we ever had before. Let's go somewhere else and start a real business. What about it? Well, uh, we'll talk about it tonight, huh? 
one more William Tell act this afternoon, and maybe we'll have enough. Just one more, huh? See you down at the place. Yeah, I'll be long. I'm just going to wash up. Okay. gone, Miss Gans. Oh. Oh, what are you staring at? You, Miss Gans. You in love with Grover? Uh, why, why, now, I, I never... Whatever gave you that idea? He did. He didn't... No. But I know him pretty well, Miss Gans. Uh, well... Well, well you're, you're wrong. Now, I, I don't say I don't like him, but then I, I like you too, Maury. You mean that, Miss Gans? Why, why, sure. Most women don't like little men like me, Mrs. Gans. Could you find it in yourself to, to love me? Well, I, I don't know. If there wasn't no Grover, if there was only one of us, could you find it in yourself to leave here, go away and get married? One. Now, where'd you get such an idea as that? I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't like such talk. You'd better like it, Miss Gans. You'd better. Hey, have you heard the talk? There's going to be another of those William Tell acts late this afternoon. Well, I can't stop it, Doc. Well, there's something else I heard, too. Mr. Bodkin down at the bank says the widow Gans is leaving town. Sold her house for cash. And she might have some more saved up somewhere. What are you saying, Doc? Well, those two uh, might be fleecing her, Matt. Hey, you said it'd be more like the other way around. A rattlesnake can be pretty if you see it that way. Oh, no, no, Matt. All right, if you want me to talk to her, Doc, ask her if she's being fleeced, you think she'll thank me for it? Yeah, more likely she'll slap your face. Yeah, but I might find out something. I think I'll try it. Gans. What do, you, what do you want, Marshal? I'll just talk to you for a minute. Well, I'm listening. I heard you sold your house. Oh, they had lots of big mouths in this town. I see you got your bag in there. You uh, planning to leave town? I don't see it's any of your business, Marshal. Oh, I just thought it might be, Miss Gans. Why? Well, you know how it is. A widow with a little money is fair game. Especially if she's pretty. What are you driving at, Marshal? You've been seeing around with this man, Grover. He just might be planning to leave town with him. Now, you listen to me, Marshal. I'm a widow, yes, but I don't have to like it. It don't have to mean my life is finished now, does it? Oh, no, ma'am, of course not. All right, then. If a man loves me and wants me to love him, it's no business of yours. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Gans. All right. Maybe you meant well, but I don't thank you. What I do is my own business, even if I lose everything. Now, you get out. towns in America have a lot in common, and yet they're each one of a kind. Take, for example, Palm Springs, California. The chief industries of Palm Springs are fun and sun. After that, there aren't any more. There are more privately owned swimming pools per capita in the village than in any other city in the world. But don't get the idea that it's all resort and nothing but funning and sunning and swimming. 
The school system in Palm Springs is one of the best. With Nellie Kaufman Junior High, Palm Springs High, and the new junior college out at Palm Desert. The annual police benefit has moved indoors, and the Desert Sun and KPAL still keep folks pretty well informed and entertained. Meanwhile, things are still busy at the youth center on Bilardo Road across from O'Donnell Golf Course. But if your hometown is Palm Springs, you already know this. We only wanted to remind you, it's still there. That's right, Grover. Can you see good from there, Marshal? Yeah, I can see. Go ahead. Uh, all right. All right, Maury. You let me go first today. No. I'll go first. What's the matter? Are you nervous because of the law? I'm not nervous. Are you? No, of course not. Don't worry. I'll put the bullet exactly where I want it. Well, go ahead, then. Walk on out about ten paces, Maury. Now, gentlemen, your attention. Please remain quiet. No movement. No loud noise. While my partner counts. Quiet, please. Is he dead? With a bullet through the forehead? Yeah, he's dead, Murray. Oh, poor Grover. Well, this is terrible. Terrible. I'm arresting you for murder, Murray. What? No, it was an accident. Everybody here saw it was an accident. You said yourself it could have happened any time. I said if it did, you'd stand trial for murder. Now, look, Marshal. Do you really think any jury would convict me with, with all these witnesses here to testify for me? No. No, I don't. Well, then, are you going to lock me up? Or will you let me take the body of my partner and bury him? All right, go ahead. Mr. Dillon, I, I swear I don't understand you. Of course it was an accident. We all seen it. Chester, why do you think I wanted to be there this time? Well, I, I don't know. I expected there might be an accident. You did? Yeah. But I didn't figure it this way. Where, where are we going? To the Widow Gans. I want to be there when little Maury shows up. <laughs> It's deserted except for that one light in the front room there. Well, let's get a little closer. And I turned the front room. Got a suitcase packed, too. Shh. There's somebody coming. Little more. Honey, is that you? Did it go all right? Is he dead? It took so long I was worried. Well, come on in. Don't stand out there. I got the money all here and... Maury. That's right, Miss Gans. It's me, Maury. I had the first shot and I figured what you two was planning. So I just changed the plan a little. Oh, no. Grover's dead, all right. But that don't matter. We'll go instead. You and me with all that money. And there's more here from the act this afternoon. Oh, this one was a real killing. No, no, don't you touch me. You said you might could love me. Well, you will. Now, come on. No, no. All right, that's enough, Maury. Marshal, you, you heard what he did. And I heard what you were planning to do, too, Miss Gaines. Turned out to be my business after all, didn't it? Oh, no. No, 
You wouldn't. Yes, I would. She's coming with me. No, no, no. Let go of her, Maury. You can't stop us, Marshal. You know how I can shoot. You've seen me. Don't try me, Maury, even with a woman to shield you. Why not? Chester. Right here, Mr. Dillon. I can hit him easy. Now, you drop your gun, Maury. You call that fair? This is no game, mister. Now, drop it. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.